So now we have the animation of the Hello World label and also the background color change, changing to yellow. We're going to see how this looks. And that looks pretty nice. And that would be even nicer to have a slight delay between the two. And I'm going to show you how to use the delay parameter. So in this second animate with duration function, we have this delay parameter. We're going to update the value to half of a second. And we're going to build and run again. And you're going to be able to see that once the Hello World animation starts, half of a second later, we're going to have the change of the background color to yellow. So let's build and run. Hello word, and then it changes to yellow. We can even make it more delayed by using the value of one second and a half. So we're going to see how this looks by building and run again. And this time you're going to see the hello word first, and then it's going to be slowly changing from white to yellow after the delay of one second and a half during two seconds. So we're going to put it back to half of a second. Now we continue with the animation. This time we're going to look at the second label, my first animation. So we're going to go back to this first animate with duration that we were using to animate the hello world label and we're going to update the code with the completion parameter. So for now it is set to nil and what we want is to start another task to execute another code once the animation ends. So we're going to go to completion and we're going to start, so we're going to use the curly brackets in order to create a closure. And that's going to be the completion closure. Inside, we're going to have another some other code that we want to, to start executing once the animation ends. So that's going to be self second animation. And that's a function that we have defined, declared, so right below. And there is always a parameter, which is a bool for the completion parameter that we must always specify. It. And here we're going to write finished in in order to indicate that we want this code to execute once the animation ends. So we don't have anything in that function. So just to indicate that the code is executing as expected, we're going to write a print. And we're just going to write something like second animation start. So you're going to be able to see that when we build and run, we're going to have the animation of the hello word. And right after when it's finished, we're going to see, we're going to be able to read in the console second animation start. So it's just to indicate that this is working properly. So we're going to try that. We're going to build and run. So we're going to have our animation hello world. And here you go. You can read in the console second animation start. So that was just a test. So now it's time to write some actual code in order to create an animation. So I'm going to remove this line and I'm going to replace with an animate with duration. So we're going to do just like we did for the hello world label. We're going to call this method on the UI view class. So it's going to auto complete and just make sure to select the one that takes the parameters delay and also options. So we're going to fill out with the correct information. So that's going to be double values for the NS time interval duration. So that's going to be just one second for delay. We're just going to leave it as zero options. So we can leave it nil by using just the square brackets. We're going to have the opportunity to use the options later animation. So we're going to create a closure for the animations and add our code in order to create the animation for the second label. And completion, it's going to be left as nil because once the animation ends, we don't want anything else to happen. It's just going to be the animation of the second label. So now we're going to do just like for the hello world label, we're going to create a slide up effect for the second label this time. So you see that in view will appear. We set this one. So outside of the bounds of the screen by using the plus and equal sign. So we're going to do the opposite this time in that animation block. So we're going to call self second label center Y and we're going to update the Y origin with minus equal sign. And so we're going to build and run to see how this looks. And you're going to be able to see these times that we have the hello world label sliding down on the screen, the color changing to yellow, and then the my first animation label, which is showing from the bottom. We're going to finish with another animation and we still have to animate the visibility of the third label. We're going to see that next with this function that we have right here. So background color, and we want this one to start. So once the animation of the background color from white to yellow is finished, so you can expect to use the completion parameter. We're going to see that in the next video lesson.
In Swift, self is inferred and is not required, although you probably noticed that we were using self from time to time. So you use the self property to refer to the current instance object. So it's true that it's not always required, although we're using self in the animations closure. A closure is a class that requires a strong reference to self to avoid deallocation and memory leak. So self will be deallocated once the animation is complete. So there's no need to worry too much about that now, but just keep in mind that self is always required when we are inside a closure or a block.